Were you born in the late 80s to the 90s? Were you forced to go to church every Sunday morning? Did you live without cable television throughout your childhood? Did you find yourself talking to imaginaries growing up? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you might have seen the show McGee and Me. So join me and let's dive into the strange world of television in Trash TV. McGee and Me was a Christian television show that ran from June 4th, 1989 to June 11th, 1995. The episodes are all around a half hour long, featuring the main character, Nicholas Martin, played by the young Joseph Damon, and the cartoon character, McGee, voiced by Ken C. Johnson. The show was written and directed by Bill Myers and Ken C. Johnson. Nicholas is an artist. He can draw and is only around 11 years old when the series begins. Nick, being young, creates his own character that he can draw and comes to life named McGee. McGee is alive, but only Nick and Nick's dog, whatever, can see and hear him. The show hints that other animals can hear and see him too. This mainly is in the first episode, The Big Lie. <laughs> but the Lone Ranger here has offered to help me bathe. <laughs> Sure, they always wash their food before they eat it. Righto, they always wash their food. That's not very right, funny. Get me out of here. McGee acts like Nick's conscience, attempting to help Nick in any way, but usually as a third party with a slight bias to what will move the story along. To make the big impression. Are you cracked? Didn't you just hear what he said? Come on, kid. Just go up and wrap on one of those windows, and we'll be heroes. McGee. At the beginning of the series, Nick has just moved to a new town in Eastfield, Indiana. Nick lives with his mom, dad, two sisters, and grandmother. Nick's dad, David, is a newspaper journalist. His mom, Elizabeth, works at a counseling center. Nick's oldest sister is Sarah, and his youngest sister is Jamie, and they all live in their grandmother's house with her. Nick, being brand new to Indiana, shortly makes a friend after his first day of school. This happens right after encountering the town bully, Derek Kreider. Nick's new friend, Louis Armstrong, saves Nick from getting his face almost smashed hey, in. Hey, smash his face in. I mean, people aren't going to fear him like they used to. His reputation will never be the same. But Derek Kreider, a man of principle, is willing to sacrifice all that on a little nothing like you. Don't you wish? Lewis saves him by being clever and using reverse psychology on the not so clever Derek. Renee Johnson and Philip Monroe are two other friends that show up later in the series and continue to pop up till the end of the series. Jordan Michaels replaces Lewis in the New Adventures episodes. These were McGee and Me episodes, but Nick is in junior high. Previous, Nick was in elementary school. The New Adventures series tackles a little bit more mature elements that the previous episodes in the series didn't, where the original series invested in issues like lying, making good choices, and helping people in need. The New Adventures series tackles issues like coming of age, facing your fears, realizing privilege. The middle ground between these two slightly different series is Twas the Fight Before Christmas and take me out of the ball game. These episodes are from the original McGee and Me series before the reboot, but shortly before. These episodes start to touch on a bit heavier subjects to show maturity in Nick as well as the viewer. Twas the Fight Before Christmas is a Christmas episode and helps the viewer grasp the Christian meaning of Christmas, touching on forgiveness, privilege, class differences, and abuse. You. Get out of here! What are you doing here? I said, what are you doing here, squid? Take Me Out of the Ball Game isn't as complex, 
but touches on jealousy, idolization, and pride. McGee and Me was a strange show. It had some extremely interesting characters and very outlandish scenarios at times. Nick always found his way to getting into some wild hijinks, and usually with the help of the strange and interestingly charismatic McGee. When the show had some really interesting premises and on-screen adventures. Bill Myers, the creator of McGee and Me, was born in Seattle, Washington, September 19th, 1953. Bill was born in a Christian home, and before going to college at the University of Washington, he became bored with Christianity. Despite his hatred for writing, he even stated that he begged God to let him avoid this in his upcoming careers at all costs. Being in writing is more exciting than Game Boy, computer games, movies, or TV shows put together. But save your prayers, because when Bill went to the Italian State Institute for Cinema and Television, he still began writing and doing a lot of it. Bill Myers began to write stories, which would become best-selling novels. To date, he has won 70 awards, national and international, including the C.S. Lewis Honor Award. His children's book, The Incredible World of Wally McDougal, sold over 2.2 million copies. Bill also went on to write television shows, but one specifically is debatable to be what he is known for best. My name is Shay. Bam Shay, private eye. She walked in and lit up the room. It's like I've always said, if you think you're a hotshot, watch out for game shows with Chocolat. <laughs> Kinsey Johnson, who worked alongside Bill Myers, was the voice of the extremely characterized McGee. McGee was in the show as a creation of Nick's and is sometimes an antagonist to the show. Acting like a conscience for Nick sometimes helps him make decisions, which usually move along the plot. Sometimes the decisions are good, and other times, they can get Nick into a bit of trouble. So what do I do against Derek and the goon platoon? Do? You can call Goliath breath out, that's what. One-on-one, -on -one, man to man, man -o man -o. Victim to mugger. Mm, I can see it now. You get him against the ropes, he comes at you like a mad crook. He swings, you duck. McGee, the guy is twice my size. Besides, you know how mom and dad feel about fighting. Ken would voice more characters in other shows he helped produce or direct. Most known would probably be The Adventures in Odyssey, which went on to be a very successful TV series, as well as stories and audiobooks. A few special guests also showed up in the show continually throughout. Frank Satsanoa, Grey Wolf Salzedo, is a Native American actor who was in the first episode of the series. He played an old Native American man with arthritis. Because of this, it causes his house to be run down and the children of Eastfield began spreading untrue rumors about him and his home. Yes, it is run down all right. But he's got arthritis so bad he can barely get himself around. Frank Salzedo was in movies such as The Ghost Dance as Akakio in 1980, Magic in the Water as Uncle Kipper in 1995, Creepshow 2 in 1988, and Best of the Best 2 as Ben White Moon in 1993. Richard Van Patten, who's been on the screen for over 50 years, he played Graham as an owner of an art store in the episode Do the Bright Thing, when Nick is debating spending his money on a new art desk. He was in movies and shows like Spaceballs as King Roland in 1987. Nose job? I don't understand. She's already had a nose job. It was a sweet 16 present. Robin Hood Men in Tights as The Abbot in 1993. Hey, Abbot! Hate that guy. Happy Days has the assistant principal, Marvin Connors slash Hansenberger, 1976, and Arrested Development as Calvin Coolen in 2005. Quitting tennis. Bye bye. Dirty Tennis. It's the perfect gift for tennis hackers everywhere. Grant Goodeve, another actor who's been on the screen for quite a long time, 
just about 40 years, also appeared on the screen alongside Nick and McGee. He was Brad Gifford, a wilderness explorer, and a guide in the New Adventures episode, In the Nick of Time. He had part in movies and shows such as The Love Boat, as various roles in 1978 to 1983, Licensed to Drive as the DMV Instructor in 1988, and Hot Rod as Sonny Munn in 1979. Oral Leonard Hershire, who mainly played for the Los Angeles Dodgers as a pitcher, he played Major League Baseball from 1983 to 2000. He guested as himself in the episode, Take Me Out of the Ball Game, during a daydream that Nick has about himself while on the baseball field. Terry Bosman and... Vaughn Taylor play Nick's parents, David and Elizabeth Martin. Sarah Damon and Chelsea Hertford play Nick's older and younger sisters, Sarah and Jamie Martin. Sarah was Joseph Damon's actual sister in the show. Eve Brenner, as his grandmother, and a sweet dog named Poundcake played the Martin's family dog, Whatever. Nick's friends, Louis Armstrong and Renee Johnson, are played by Brent Kelly and Shalissa Hurt. The town bully, Derek Kreider, played by Johnny Green, and Philip Monroe is a friend Nick makes when Derek begins bullying young Philip in the episode Skate Expectations. Come on, that is enough. Raspberry, my favorite. Philip is played by Whitby Hertford and continues to be in the show even after the reboot in The New Adventures. <laughs> He's got that right. What can I do for you, kid? Got any old Spider-Man comics? No, but I know a dealer in Toronto might. The Panasonic fax system can be important to even the smallest business. He's faxing me some covers. Whitby Hertford could have had a whole video for himself with all the things he has done since playing a small young boy in McGee. Whitby went on to continue acting after McGee and Me, and he also began directing in his later years as he got older. You know, dead people aren't the ones to be scared of. Whitby has been in numerous films and shows, a lot that we have all grown to love. Here are some that would be most familiar. The Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child as Jacob Johnson, 1989. The Addams Family movie as Little Tully in 1991. Glee as Dakota Stanley in 2009. He even did voice acting on the Little Mermaid TV series from 1991 to 1994. Tiny Toon Adventures, 1990 to 1992. Batman the Animated Series in 1994, The Land Before Time 3 in 95, Chowder in 2009, Star Wars The Clone Wars TV series from 2010 to 2013. But my favorite is his small role in Jurassic Park, 1993. Whitby found a love for the stage and began directing his own acts in London and Utah and serving as the artistic director for the theater company Riot Act. Whitby's directing credit are as listed, but not limited to, An Enemy of the People, Mopey Rex, Poor Bastard, and House, which is an adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, but with an immersive LGBTQA take on the well-known play by William Shakespeare. Brent Kelly, who played Lewis, went on to join the Air Force after doing all the original episodes. His younger brother, Sonny Kelly, took his place in the show as Jordan Michaels. Soon, they were both in the Air Force together, right before tragedy struck. Brent committed suicide while in the Air Force when Sonny reached age 26. Sonny has dedicated his life to encouraging and inspiring others. He does that through his comedy and being a teacher and also a motivational speaker. Sonny's latest work, The Talk, addresses the challenge parents of black children experience when preparing them to survive and thrive in a radicalized America. Joseph Damon, who played Nick throughout the entire series, like most actors, weren't like their characters that they portrayed on the set. I mean, who would want them to be? After the show ended, Joseph worked in catering, retail, but more importantly, worked on a few more shows. He may not have acted in these shows, but he worked as a head logger, transcriber, and assistant story producer. He worked mainly on shows like The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, Trading Spaces, and It's Me or the Dog. 
also driving limos for Santa Barbara Hot Rod Limo in later years. Like most shows, this is always more happening behind the scenes. Joseph was addicted to alcohol and cocaine for a few years after his parts in McGee, using a lot of the money from being a child actor for his addictions. It's I was a child actor, <laughs> so I got a bunch of residual checks unexpectedly in the mail, about 18 grand, and I spent it all on booze and cocaine. He is now sober, eight years sober, since winter of 2016. After some time, Joseph got back to making short films in 2019. He was in a short film called Treat Yourself. Treat yourself. A dark comedy about a suicidal man looking for the best way to end it all. Written and directed by Nathan Leonard. Honestly guys, I really recommend you check this out. I'll post a link in the description. Now, one of my favorite things about this series is the music. The music is definitely dated, but it still sounds great. And is hard to deny. They are without a doubt a solid jam. James Koval composed every song for the full series. Right after James graduated USC in music composition, he started his music career, scoring, songwriting, and conducting his way through his career, and still to this day. James has even done music in Netflix Beastmaster, CBS is Hunted, and of course, McGee and Me. His songs were the theme song, Love Never Lies, You'll never be alone. Stand up. Stand up. Do what you have to do. Stay tough, cause you're gonna make it through. It's gonna stay right there in your heart. It's gonna stay, gonna stay right there in your heart. Right there in your heart. Step by step. Do the bright thing. And my personal favorite, Star in the Breaking. If you haven't heard any of these, I'll post a link in the description. I think they are a treat. Well, there you have it. A little documentary on McGee and Me. Thanks for joining me here on Trash TV. Uh, hit that subscription, hit that like, and uh, join us next time. Uh, I'd like to see you here again when we talk about some more Trash TV. <laughs>